Hello. So the Booker Prize shortlist for 2022 was just announced and how do I feel about that? Having read almost every single book on the list. So I read 11 out of 13. Uh, the two missing that I didn't read were After Sappho and Maps of Our Spectacular Bodies. Now, there was one book that did not make it onto the shortlist. Uh, so I think I better get that out of the way now because I'm quite upset by that. <laughs> which was The Colony by Audrey McGee, which was so much richer, so much more poetic, so beautifully, just so beautifully written and really played a game with your kind of, oh, I, I don't know. Yeah, again, it's just gonna turn into another, uh, <laughs> another gush fest for, for the colony, but I just cannot believe that that book did not make the shortlist. Uh, my jaw has dropped. I, I can't believe it. I can't believe that Glory made it onto the shortlist over the colony. It blows my mind. But what's done is done. So let's have a little look through the shortlist and I can maybe predict what I think is going to win or what I think my maybe my top two might be. So number one, in the order in which they were announced, we have Glory by No Violet Bulawayo. And uh, I, I, I really did not like this book. I, I made a previous video, which I think I'll link down below if you should wish to check it out, in which I talked about all the reasons that I did not like that book. I felt like uh, it had some major flaws, lots of flaws in its writing structure, in the rules that the author had created and then broke, which just left the whole thing feeling a little bit confused, just confused. And yeah, so Glory was was not for me. I really did not enjoy reading it. Next up, we have The Trees by Percival Everett, which yes, I'm very pleased this one has made the shortlist. I thought this book was excellent. I believe I gave it a 4.5 out of five stars, something like that. Um, it was just an excellent book. Uh, the pacing was wonderful. It was so beautifully layered. It was so black and white and sort of on the nose in what it was trying to do. It's so unapologetically aggressive and violent and throwing its politics in the audience's face or in the audience, in the reader's face. Um, and I loved it for that. It was such a change in pace and such a change in attitude from other books on the list. I loved how relentless it was and the dialogue was brilliant. Yeah, just overall, this is one that I would like to see win. So yeah, The Trees by Percival Everett, very happy that this one made the list. Number three, we have Treacle Walker by Alan Garner, which I very much disliked. I couldn't get on board with the writing style. I thought the story was, was kind of pointless. I failed to draw any kind of meaning from it. If, yet again, as I said in my long list review, it felt like a children's book. It felt like a, an author who writes children's books trying to write a fantasy fable on, on a more adult level and still ended up writing a children's book but tried to convince the reader that they're not reading a children's book and there's nothing wrong with children's books I find I love children's books you know what I, mean? I think it's such an incredibly hard craft but yet this it was just an, um, a massive foul for me if this wins then I, ju I just can't see it winning it's just got nothing in it it's got you can't emotionally latch on to the characters it's it's got an oddness that doesn't gel uh, yeah just not for me this one uh, it might just not be my style uh, but saying that I read a lot of, of fantasy and fable writing but no not for me I think there was a lot better books released of this ilk this year alone uh, that would be much more worthy of replacing this book. So yeah, I did not enjoy this one. Number four, we have The Seven Moons of Mali Almeida, uh, which I thought was excellent. I think I also gave this one a big old 4.5 out of 5 for many reasons. The, the subject matter, the politics, the magical realism, the way it interprets religion, the way it world builds very much the afterlife, um, and it never feels like it's straining to do so. It never feels like the world building is at the expense of the story being told or the politics of what the, of the, what the story is trying to tell you, which I 
thought is an excellent achievement. Um, it, it was, it did take quite a while to get into to grips with the, the flow of the writing style and the writing style in general and its location and names and things like that. But once I hit past that 100 page mark, I was in. It was a, a great ride and I really enjoyed it. And up there with the trees, this is one that I also hope really makes uh, or wins the prize. I would be very happy with if the trees or Seven Moons of Mali Armida uh, was to take the top spot and win this. Number five, we have Small Things Like These by Claire Keegan, which I thought was a lovely, lovely short novel. Um, I really enjoyed this. I think I gave it like 3.5 stars out of five. And the only reason I might not have, have, have put it higher is kind of part of my own personal biases in which I enjoy longer stories. Uh, I'm not much of a novella or short story type person. Oh, I do enjoy a book of short stories. I don't know what I'm trying to say. There's just something I get more out of an experience of reading when the journey takes a little bit longer, when I've got a little bit more to sink my teeth into. Um, and that might be why I didn't put this one higher. But regardless, the writing is beautiful. The way in such a short amount of time she builds this sense of place and location and unease and gives you such a kind of a rich idea of how was it Bill Furlong the lead character our protagonist how he feels in this world and how he thinks about this world and how he yeah it's she does an incredible amount in such a very short amount of time and for that reason alone I'm really happy that this is on the long list and it's one that I wouldn't be too down if it if it won if it took the Booker Prize I wouldn't be that upset because I think for such a short amount of time she does achieve quite quite a lot um, I just think there's other books on this list that I, I connected with more. And finally, number six, uh, we have O William by Elizabeth Strout, which, I mean, this book's been on a bit of a journey from many, many people on all the forums and and on Twitter and, and things like that, saying that this book didn't deserve to be on the long list. Um, and I completely understood why people might have felt that way, because it's it's very straightforward. It's very simple. I say simple. Simple sounds like a like a criticism, but it's really not. It's just very straightforward and simple and very, very accessible in its writing style. And I think for some people that doesn't necessarily tick a book a box. Um, but yeah, again, I really, I think I gave this 3.5 stars out of five and I really enjoyed this book. I really did enjoy it. I thought there was something quite effortless in her writing style uh, that packed quite a lot into also what was quite a small book. Um, as I mentioned in my long list review, I really loved diving into the world of Lucy Barton and I really, I'm gonna go back and read the others and the new one that's just been released. And I'm very excited to to imagine an idea of, of someone reading all these books one after the other and getting this kind of insanely detailed sort of idiosyncratic, uh, heartfelt and honest account of a human life. I think when she finishes it, however big it is, it's, it's gonna be quite an achievement. And I, I'm actually, I actually smiled quite a lot when I heard that O. William had made the list. So that's another one that, you know, if it won, which I don't think it will, but if it did, um, yeah, I'd be I'd be pleased with that. So there's only really two books on this list that if they won, I think I would be upset. And I mean, it's just a book prize, so I don't know why I'm getting upset, but I like to invest in these things. <laughs> so yeah, if Glory or Treacle Walker wins, then I will go and sulk in the corner for about an hour and then cheer myself up with a cup of tea and a couple of biscuits. But <laughs> if the trees or seven moons win, so those are my two picks. I think if you were to, to push me on what I would like to win more, the trees or seven moons, I think I would lean towards the trees. But I mean, it's so tight between the two. Seven moons is also just there. I can't really pick between the two of them. And yeah, and then the other two, uh, small things like these, yeah, if that was to take the top spot, I'd be really pleased for that. I, really, I think that would be quite an accomplishment for, for such a, a small, short novel to, to do that. I think that'd be great. I have no idea what the shortest novel that's ever won the Booker Prize is. Maybe if someone knows, they could comment below. But but yeah, that would be, I'd be really happy with that. And I said, if O. William came out of nowhere and was a big, you know, F you to all the haters <laughs> who didn't think it even deserved to be on the list in the first place, then um, then that would put a big smile on my face as well. So overall, 
Um, I'm pretty happy with that shortlist. I'm just deeply, deeply upset for the book that was my favourite, the book that's going to stay with me for some time to come, and the book for me that will always be the winner of this prize, which was The Colony by Audrey McGee. Um, yeah, I, 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 I love that. I love that book. <laughs> But there you go. Um, please comment below what your thoughts are on the shortlist and what you think might win out of those six books. And I suppose we'll find out on the 17th of October. All right. Thanks for watching.